So first, uh, I try to remind you uh, what we did uh, at the end of uh, last lecture, which was last Wednesday. And so we introduced these uh, things called the Grossman variables, which are anti-commuting. Classically, they anti-commute. So for example, if you have, say, a quantity called theta, and then theta zero, uh, theta square equal to zero, and then two such kind of Grassmann variables commute with anti-commute with each other. Okay, and then then if you consider a function of such theta, then you just do Taylor expansion, and you only have two terms. So the first term just a constant, and the second term just proportional to theta, because all higher power terms uh, vanish. Okay, so the same thing with uh, multiple variable, just expand until you reach the square of any variable, okay? And then you can do a differentiation. So we always define the differentiation from the left. So, so when you, yeah, so this just given by F1, okay? And we can also define the integration. And the integration just determined by two rules. First rule is that the um, the theta a constant equal to zero, and also the theta theta equal to one. Okay, so based on these two rule, and then you can just uh, work out the integral of any functions. Okay, you can work out the integral of any functions. So. Um, Before I proceed, do you have any questions on this? Good. So for multivariable function, you just expand. Say for example, if you have two variables, then you just have F0 plus F1 theta 1 plus F2 theta 2 plus f1, 2, say theta 1, theta 2, okay? So we can also defi uh, uh, define the integrate, uh, 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 yeah, the differentiation of multivariable uh, function are easy, you just be a little bit careful of the uh, uh, direction you do, uh, take the derivative. So now let's look at the example of the integration, uh, 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 of integration. Okay, let's look at the integral of such a two uh, in, uh, uh, a function of two variables. So, so should keep in mind that this order is important because theta one and theta two anti commute. So, if we write d theta one and d theta two, then it is d theta one and d theta two. Okay, uh, it's equal to minus d theta two d theta one. Okay, if you want to change the order. So, so we can just do the integration by using this rule. Okay, you just plug in the, uh, this expansion into here. Okay, just plug in this expansion into here. And then obviously, all these three terms will give you zero because the, uh, um, yeah, uh, um, um, and the, the only the last term will, uh, will contribute. And, the, and then you just get F12, then d theta 1, d theta 2, then theta 1 times theta 2. Okay? So now if you want to do the integration, because theta 2 is before the theta, uh, uh, here, uh, theta 2 is closer, and the theta 2 before theta 1, and then you need to exchange the order. So we can do it by doing F12, d theta 1, and then you have d theta 2 integral theta 2, and then theta 1. Okay, now I have exchanged the order of theta 1, theta 2, and this gives me 1. So after this gives me 1, this also gives me 1, so this is just equal to minus f1, 2. Okay, so, so similarly you can just do arbitrary number uh, uh, of integrals. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, you can just do integrals with arbitrary uh, uh, number of variable. Okay, just keep in mind, uh, d theta 1, d theta 2, theta 2, theta 1, this is equal to 1, okay? So 
uh, uh, so you do this first, and then you do that, and then you get the right order. Any questions on this? Yes? Uh, uh, here, we just take them to be ordinary numbers, uh, so they can just be complex numbers. That's right. Other questions? Okay, good. So now we can look at a little bit more complicated integral. So now let's look at the uh, Gaussian. So let's look at such a Gaussian integral. So this Gaussian integral looks complicated, but of course it's simple because again, this is when you expand it, there's only a single term left. Okay, so 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 this is just equal to this theta one, this theta two, and one minus this guy. Okay. Yeah, so theta one, a one, two, theta two. Because the the, uh, the next term when you do the Taylor expansion will give you zero. Big bits. Because that will involve the theta one square uh, or, or or theta two square. And now if you use this rule, you just get a one two. Okay, just get a one two. Okay, and uh, so you can now generalize to arbitrary uh, 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 to Gaussian uh, integral with arbitrary number of variables. Okay, and uh, so so we can write a more general integral d theta one d theta two n. Okay, because they. Uh, minus one half theta i a i j theta j okay so now here uh, it should assume i and j are summed okay so 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 i j is from one to two n okay so for this integral again uh, the strategy is simple you just again just expand it and uh, 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 and then just do term by term, okay? So at a certain time, uh, 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 when you reach, expand to certain order, the theta will repeat, and then and then the expansion truncates. But you can actually easily uh, convince yourself without doing any calculation uh, 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 to see what the answer is. So so if you don't expand to sufficient number of theta. You will get a zero because the, because you have to have uh, uh, each theta uh, for d theta, okay, in order for this rule. So you have to have one uh, uh, one theta for each d theta, okay. So so that means you have to expand to the order which each theta just appear exactly once, okay. And then if you do that, uh, and if you look at that term, you find that this just gives you square root determinant a i j determinant a, okay. Find this actually give you. Okay, so we are not. Uh, uh, so so here A is anti-symmetric uh, by definition should be anti. Yeah, because theta i, theta j anti-commute, so A i j should be anti-symmetric matrix. Good. Any questions on this? So this looks like standard Gaussian integral. Remember the standard Gaussian integral. What, what would you get uh, if you have such kind of uh, uh, a quadratic structure for the standard Gaussian integral but for ordinary number? Do you remember what you get? Yes. Exactly. Right, so, so for the ordinary, uh, uh, if theta are ordinary variables, and then you will get some constant divided by square root of determinant A. But for the gross by number, it just uh, of it, and you get the proportional to the determinant, okay, not divided by the determinant. Good, so we can also introduce complex uh, gross by variables.
So for example, I can introduce theta. If I do square root 2, theta 1 plus i theta 2. So theta 1 and theta 2 are considered to be two real Grassmann variables, i, just ordinary i. And then, then the theta star would be, of course, the theta square root 2, theta 1 minus i theta 2. OK? And uh, so, so the rule for defining the product, the complex conjugation for the product is defined to be eta star, theta star. OK? So this is different from the ordinary variables. So this is defined more like for operator. OK, so for, for Grassmann variables, when we define the, the complex conjugate, we actually change the order, OK? As well, uh, what we normally do for our Hermitian uh, uh, conjugate. So, so, so now if you have a function of, say, theta theta star, which theta are now complex uh, Grassmann variables, you just do the same thing. So you have C0 plus C1. Is theta plus c1 bar, theta star, then plus c11, theta, theta star. OK, so again, you, uh, you, you just expand in theta and theta star, and then when you, uh, you truncate here, because, because of the further terms will involve either theta square or theta star square. Okay. And uh, so here, we. For the integration, we define the theta to theta star and the theta star theta to be 1. OK, so, so we choose this convention. OK. So, yeah. So we define this to be 1. OK, uh, so that corresponding to a specific choice of uh, measure for this to theta to theta star. Okay. Good. So now we can look at the complex Gaussian integral. Again, now, now let's look at Gaussian. So, so if you have d theta, say if you have d theta star d theta, say exponential minus theta star b theta. So b is just some number, some arbitrary number. Okay, and again you can just do it by expanding this in power series, and just as in that example, you just find that this is equal to b. OK, just find this is equal to b. Okay. And you can also now do multiple variable, do multiple variable Gaussian. So suppose you have now j equal to 1 to n, d theta j star theta j, OK, the product of all of them. So if you have minus theta i star a i j, theta j, again, i and j should be uh, assumed to be summed. And then when you expand it, OK, again, you, you expand precisely to the, to the order. Only one term in that, only one term in the expansion uh, 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 contribute is the expansion which each theta and theta dot appear exactly once. Okay, so uh, uh, when you look at that term, and then you find that this precisely give you delta a. Okay, so again, this should be con uh, uh, contrasted with the complex integral, ordinary complex Gaussian integral. So if you have an ordinary Gaussian integral for complex variables, again, you will get one over-determinant A. OK, it's some constant over-determinant A. So, so, so for Grossman, uh, 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 it just get determinant A, OK? And this is very, uh, uh, this feature is very key in, in, in distinguishing fermions and the, and the bosons, and they play a very important role, OK? So we can also consider uh, uh, um, more general integrals, uh, uh, more general Gauss integrals like this. So, so now let me just introduce a little bit notation. So let me call the theta equal to theta 1, theta, say, n. Let me introduce eta. Eta is some other Grassmann variables, eta 1. 
eta n, okay? And then we can consider, um, then we can consider integral like this, which we will encounter. Later we will encounter integral like this, again d theta star j, d theta j. Then you have exponential, so minus theta dagger. So now the dagger including both the transpose and the taking the star, okay? And A, A now is just the matrix. Again, uh, I just write this in the matrix notation. But now suppose I, here I only have a quadratic term, but suppose now I have some linear term. Say eta dagger theta and the theta dagger eta. Okay, suppose now I have this, okay? And again, this will be, uh, you can just complete the square do the Grassmann version of the complete the square, and uh, then, uh, then you can convince yourself that this is given by data A, data uh, determinant of A, matrix A, and then exponential eta dagger A minus one eta, okay? So up to, um, up to the sign and i, etc. This is exactly what you normally expect. Okay, uh, after you complete the square, you get a minus one here, and then you get this eta. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. A does not have to be on this metric. Yeah. Yeah. So a can be some complex matrix in principle. Yeah some general complex matrix. So, so I will also denote, so let's denote this by i eta and eta star, okay? Okay, so, so we only need the one last formula and then, then, then we can talk about the path integral for the Dirac fields. So, so one last formula is that we say, let's try to calculate the, uh, uh, the following integral, one over I zero, zero. Okay, I zero, zero means just this integral. Okay, just this integral is I zero, zero. We suppose eta equal to zero, okay? So uh, one over I zero, zero, suppose let's consider this integral j from one to n, d theta j star, d theta j. Now suppose we have theta k star, and theta k, and the theta l star in downstairs, okay? And then you have exponential minus theta dagger a theta. Suppose you have an integral like this, okay? And the, so the integral like this can be obtained from this one by taking derivatives. So this is like a generating functional. So, so then this can be considered as one over, yeah, let me just suppress this to zero, one over i, you can have minus partial, partial eta star k, and then, yeah, partial, partial l. Okay, then you have, then take derivative on i eta and eta star, taking derivative on this, and then, then after you take the derivative, you set the eta equal to eta star equal to zero. Okay? So, so when you take this two derivative, and then you can see that will bring, on, uh, bring down the theta k and theta uh, 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 l, and this sign just uh, to, uh, to, to make sure you get the sign uh, correctly. And then when you do this derivative on here, and then you find that this just given by a minus one KL, okay? So this is actually the same as the bosonic case, okay? Remember in the bosonic case, if you have a Gaussian integral, and if you have the two variables in the downstairs, and then that gives you the inverse of the matrix. Yeah, up to a constant, okay. Uh, uh, um, yeah, so so this aspect is actually similar to the to, 
to the bosonic case. So do you have any questions? Yes. Um, just an integral, yeah. Yeah, 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 just a short time notation. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, you can call it the generating function. Yeah, so this is a generating functions for, uh, for arbitrary powers of this kind of integral. Yeah, because any, uh, any powers of theta, uh, any combination of theta k, etc., you can just uh, uh, obtain by taking derivative on this i. Yeah, so this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can. So, so, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 you can uh, uh, here just the complex conjugate. In some sense, they are independent of each other. Yeah, they are independent variables. Yeah, theta and theta star because they depend on two variables, and you can just view them as independent variables. Okay, good. So, so now finally, we have the preparation to do the path integral for the Dirac field. Okay. So, so remember, Dirac field is the is a vector uh, is a spinner field with four components. With four components, and they depend on space-time coordinates. Okay. So if you, so normally we just say this is just uh, uh, the ordinary functions. But now, in order to uh, uh, correctly capture the fermionic nature of the Dirac fields, and now require that the psi alpha x, so alpha equal to one. To three, four, take values, take values as Grossman numbers. Okay. So what this means? So x is still uh, our ordinary coordinate for any choice of space-time location x. So this psi alpha give you a, a Grossman number, okay? Uh, and just for any choice of x, uh, 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 this just means that, okay? Uh, and this is a function uh, from ordinary space-time variable to the space of the Grossman numbers, okay? To the space of Grossman numbers. And in particular, uh, uh, this means that psi alpha x psi beta y, they anti-commute. Okay, the anti-commute, okay. So this is the rule. So now that's the only difference, and now we can just do the path integral, okay. So the path integral is just in completely parallel as before. So otherwise, exactly the same as before. For, uh, for what we did before for a scalar field, okay? So the only difference is now the, uh, 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 the things you are integrating and, uh, uh, um, yeah. So in particular, we can write any correlation functions. So for example, um, yeah, uh, uh, now say the, so uh, uh, again, let's use omega to denote the vacuum state and the time ordered correlation function x denotes some product of operators, yeah, our previous notation, and the omega, and the divided by omega. So this has a path integral in the uh, 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 present description in terms of psi bar, the psi, and then x in the integrand, and then exponential i s, And then 
So everything is exactly the same as before, just except that the variable this you are integrating now, now are Grassmann variables. Okay, and the S is just whatever your uh, uh, action is. Okay, so, so let me explain a little bit this notation. Psi, the so deep psi just means you have, first you have alpha from one to four, and then you have the psi, alpha, t, and x, okay? And, and this rotation is exactly the same as before, okay? Just uh, when I write the psi, you should imagine uh, I take product of all components, okay? And then for, uh, for, uh, for each of them, it's just exactly the same as we do for the, uh, for the bosonic field uh, definition. Uh, just the only difference that now this is cross map variables. And so, yeah, also the x here, just to say some product of size, okay? So arbitrary uh, product of the size, and you can, uh, 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 yeah, then you have just, you just, everything previous take over, you can just write down the expression. So again, in order to cal uh, do calculations, uh, for example, to calculate the propagator, et cetera, it's convenient to use the generating functional, okay, as we do here for this, for this Gaussian integral. So, um, so it's convenient to introduce this generating functional eta, eta bar. Okay, so, so this is defined to be, we do the deep psi bar, deep psi, and then you have exponential at s, and then you write, say, eta bar psi, psi bar. Okay, so, so again, when you take derivative on eta, then you can bring down the powers of psi or psi bar, and then you can just use, then you use that as a trick. If you know this one, and then you can just calculate any x, okay. Any questions on this? Yes? No, no, you don't need the, um, uh, you can view this as a definition, okay? You can just view this as a definition. We just carry over, what uh, you use as a definition, we carry over what we did before, and then we just replace everything by Grassmann variables. Any questions, any other questions? Good. Okay, so, so now let's just try to calculate this in free theory. So in the free theory, uh, we will eventually consider the, uh, so far we just consider the, the Dirac theory, okay, so, so let's just first consider the Dirac theory and then we'll, uh, uh, so this is general, okay, this is a complete general, you, uh, S can be anything, but for the Dirac theory we have S0, is equal to minus i, so, so for, the, for the Dirac theory, it's simple because it's just quadratic in psi, and then we just have a Gaussian integral here, okay? And so we just have a Gaussian integral here. And then we can, uh, um, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, so, um, so the first thing to do is to write, again, write this as a form of a matrix, okay? So we have already done this before. So this is just become I before X before Y. And then you have psi bar alpha X, A alpha beta, X minus Y, psi beta Y. 
Okay, so so this a alpha beta x minus y. So this is a matrix, both in the spinner space and in the space of ordinary function uh, in the space of functions. So this is x minus y. Yeah, so this means you take derivative on y, okay? So, so once you write in this form, and then again, we have this just in the Gaussian form. So now this part in the go just in the Gaussian form. And again, we can just generalize what we uh, did before. Just keep in mind that those integrals, now this is given by determinant a, okay? And then, and then we just find that the, um, so, so for example, if you just, and now this uh, z eta, z zero. So this means that we consider the Dirac theory. So this just can be directly evaluated. And then this is given by determinant A. So now this determinant should be understood as both in the spinner space and in the space of functions. Uh, 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 um, yeah. And, uh, and then, then we have the analog of this term. We have analog of this term. And then we have exponential eta bar, then dot d. So I denote the a minus one as d, and the motivation, yeah. And the d, so, so, this, so this should be considered as a shorthand rotation for um yeah so this so this should be considered as a yeah let me just write it here so this should be considered as a shorthand rotation for d4 x d4 y eta bar alpha x d0 alpha beta x minus y eta beta y Okay, so uh, so this uh, so this thing is a shorthand notation for this, and this d alpha beta zero x minus y just the inverse of this matrix A. Okay, in the okay, just you should view it as the inverse of that matrix A, and that's the same thing as what we did in the Poissonian case, and this will be uh, this corresponding to the Feynman. For this, using the same argument, you can show the, the, uh, this corresponding to the Feynman propagator, time-ordered propagator of of psi. Okay. Okay. So everything is similar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so you can just view the uh, you can just you don't have to think about the gamma zero here. You can just think about the psi, uh, eta bar just as an independent variable of eta. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can just treat uh, uh, treat it as some independent variable. <clears throat> yes. Uh, no, eta is Grossman. No, eta is Grossman. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, eta is Grossman. And in particular, eta depends on space time, okay? Because we want to be able to take a derivative to get the psi x. And so, uh, so eta, uh, there are, uh, yeah, eta have the same. Yeah, the eta is the eta one x, eta four x. Okay. Yeah, same with eta bar, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, say it again. Uh, integrals always are the sum of the No, no, no. Uh, 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 the integrals is just some some functions of the Grossman variables. Yeah, just some functions of Grossman variables. Good. So, and then from here, 
from this expression, we can just find the, the uh, all the correlation function in the free theory. Okay, so so yeah, so uh, let me just quickly write it here, but I don't have yeah, I think there are no enough space. Yes. No, no, that doesn't doesn't have to be. It, it, it depends on the situation. Here you get the constant. Here you get the function of Grossman variables. Yeah, it just depends on situation. Oh, okay, so yeah. like the, the, like the pass variable, it'll all work out because it's kind of random, right? Uh, it depends. It depends if you have eta. So if you don't have eta, and then you get a C number. Uh, 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 you get the C number, but here, if you have eta, then you get the function of eta. Okay. And, and eta are Grossman variables. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so now you can just obtain any correlation functions in Dirac theory. You can just take derivative with uh, respect to this z. So yeah, so say psi x one, psi x n, zero. And I, uh, again, with the previous convention, always use zero to denote the vacuum of the free theory, and then using this omega to denote the uh, the vacuum. Say if you have intact in theory, okay. And uh, so, so yeah. Again, this is just uh, uh, you just get uh, get z zero with eta set to be zero. Okay, and then just do derivatives. Okay, you just yeah up to a sign, just delta eta x one, delta eta x n, and then you take derivative on this z. Um, yeah, so so it depends on whether you do the bar or not at bar. So so for example, here is the bar. So so here psi, yeah. Uh, and the, if it's a psi, then you take derivative with eta bar. If it's psi bar, you take derivative with eta. Okay. Anyway, so and then you, in the end you set eta equal to eta bar. Exactly the same as before. Okay. And then again because. Because these have this kind of structure, you always pair eta bar with eta in uh, with d in here. So when you do that, you you just get all possible contractions, sum over all possible contractions. Okay, the sum over all contractions. And each contractions. So each contraction is just a propagator. So if you have x1 bar x2, so each contraction is just uh, give you d0 x1 minus x2. OK, so now I suppress the spinner indices. OK. OK. So now you have to be careful. So one thing you have to be careful you said now all this become anti-commuting. Okay, so when you take the derivative, and then uh, and then uh, then there's uh, you have to be careful about the, the when you, when you do the contraction, you have to be careful about the order uh, 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 of the size. So for example, if you look at the two-point function, so if you look at the two-point function, so if you have psi x one, psi bar x two. And psi bar x3, psi x4. If you have this, then there are two possible contractions. 
you can have this contract with that, this contract with that, or this contract with that, and this contract with that. Okay, so you have to be careful about the, the uh, about the sign, uh, and if you are careful, okay, so uh, so you find, uh, you, uh, you will get minus t zero. So x one minus x two, and the d x three uh, x four minus x three. So the minus sign come from you need to exchange these two so that you have the form of psi and the psi bar. Okay, have psi and psi bar, and then then you can also have the d zero x one minus x three and d zero x4 minus x2. So in this one, you can just change the order. Yeah, so uh, so here should be time ordered. Okay, so should be time ordered. And so, so the reason this plus sign here, because you can shift this x2 by two positions to the right of the uh, uh, upside x4, and then, and then these two will be labor, uh, 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 now become labors, and, and then uh, uh, psi four and psi two will be labels. Okay, so you just get the positive sign. Okay, so so you just have to be careful about the sign. Okay. Any questions on this? Other than that, everything is the same as before. Okay. So so now you can also just do the interacting theory. Can do the interacting theory. Say now the the the, the correlation function in the interacting theory divided by omega. And now you just and now we just do perturbation theory. We just use that, and then we can write it as the um, correlation functions in free theory. Again, just the everything is the same. Just now you have to be careful now the integral is over the Grassmann variables. Okay. So T again here is T. Time ordered. Okay. Other than that, everything just the same as before. And again, you will can show that the uh, vacuum diagrams with vacuum bubbles cancel or cancel, so you don't have to include the vacuum bubble. And then, then the epsilon prescription is m goes to m minus epsilon. Okay, very similar to before. Good, any questions? So now we can just apply identically the formalism we developed before for interacting theory of scalar field to here, except we just have to be careful about some signs. Okay, because when you exchange the fermions, you get some signs. And other than those subtleties of signs, uh, everything else will be the same. Okay. But those signs sometimes can be annoying. Okay. So so we can derive the Feynman. We can draw the Feynman diagrams as before, and write down the Feynman rules, etc. Okay. So so now let me just uh, uh, write uh, do the. Um, um, yeah, just everything carries over, so let me just emphasize the difference from the scalar case.
So yes, um, the, the difference of Feynman rules for this from the scalar case. So, so there's various differences. So, so first, let's talk about the, the. Remember, we have different Feynman rules for green functions, and also have ones for scattering amplitude. So, the scattering amplitude is the one with the external lag truncated, and in the green function, you don't truncate the external lag. Okay. So now, let me first say the for the green functions. So. Um, so for the propagator, so first, so again, the propagator is just represented by a line. But here, we have a complex field, OK? And so like, uh, as we did for the complex scalar field, now you need to assign an arrow to indicate the flow of the direction of the charge. So, so we always assign the arrow to flow from the bar to the uh, uh, to the unbarred side. Okay. So if uh, so so for that one, so we will do that. Okay. So this will be x two, will be x one. Okay. Suppose this is the um, this is beta. This will be alpha. Okay. So so if I put the alpha beta here. So, so this will be alpha x1 and the beta x2, and then uh, the arrow goes to the, um, yeah. So this is a charge arrow. This is not the momentum arrow. You can also, uh, in, in addition, assign a momentum. OK, you can addition assign a momentum. And the, the momentum, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is in the coordinate space. Uh, sorry, so, uh, so this is in the coordinate space. And so this just gives you p0 alpha beta x1. Minus x two. Okay, so so in the coordinate space. So in momentum space, we don't uh, label the locations. So in momentum space, we just have alpha and the beta, and now you ha uh, also have a momentum. Okay, so 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 the so you can choose momentum in any direction you want. Okay, so for often for convenience, just as in the scalar case, we often choose a momentum to be in the same arrow in this direction. But in the case which you want to choose momentum arrow to be different, and you can just draw a momentum arrow, okay, okay, which can be different, okay. And so in momentum space, the propagator is given by we have already written before, so it's given by minus one over i slash minus m plus epsilon, okay, alpha beta, okay. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can hear. Uh, no, that aspect is the same as in the complex scalar case. No different from the complex scalar case. Yeah. But why do you still keep the, the C particle propagating? Yeah, yeah, you can consider as the particle propagating in one direction and then the antiparticle propagating in the opposite direction. You can interpret either way. Yeah, this is the, uh, the, the important is the direction of the charge flow. Good. Yeah, so the momentum we emphasize, so the charge arrow, not arbitrary, but the momentum arrow, is arbitrary, okay? 
So momentum error, you can choose whatever you want, okay? So, um, so also the rule we do for the external, um, so the B, so you uh, talk about the external point, because for the, uh, for the propagator, uh, for, the, uh, for the correlation functions, say you have those external points, okay? And, uh, and uh, some of them will be psi, some of them will be psi bar, okay? Again, we, uh, we assign the rule as this. We assign rule as this. For each external point, if it's, uh, uh, if it's, uh, um, if it's a psi, if, uh, if the end point is given by, by the psi bar alpha x, okay, from the rule that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the arrow always leave the direction from the psi bar, then we should draw it as alpha x, okay? So, so this is the external point, okay? And similarly, uh, uh, if you have a psi alpha x, so this is, and then you, and then the arrow will come in. Okay, the arrow will come in, okay? Uh, and so in momentum space, so, so if we choose the momentum to be the same direction, so we just have k, uh, and the, 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 take k to be the same arrow, and here again, it's the same thing, okay? So this is the coordinate space, this is the momentum space, this is for psi bar, this is for psi, okay? Yeah, just follow the same rule, yes? Yeah, we'll talk about that, yeah. Yeah, here is talk about, here we're talking, here I'm talking about the correlation functions. In correlation functions, you don't talk about the particles, you just look at what are the external points. And when we talk about scattering amplitude, then we talk about, uh, I haven't talked about scattering amplitude yet. Do you have any questions, uh, other questions? Okay, good. So, so now the most important is now the, uh, uh, now you have spinners, and now you have components, okay? Now the propagator is a matrix, and each spinner is a vector, uh, so you have, now you have to be careful about the, the, uh, 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 the, the indices, okay? So, uh, so the last thing you have to be careful is that now you have to, uh, um, so the spinner indices are contracted. following the arrows, okay? Okay. And I will explain what this means, okay? Uh, 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 so here it's a little bit heuristic, but uh, a statement is a bit uh, heuristic, but, uh, but I will explain in detail what this means uh, when we talk about scattering amplitude. Because the scattering amplitude, uh, so this aspect will be similar to the scattering amplitude that we just explained in one place, okay? So the scattering amplitude, so the rule follow, again, follow from this LSZ, which I will not derive, and this uh, 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 Neiman, uh, semantic Zimmerman uh, uh, reduction rule, and so, so you, you can see the, say you have some initial, you have some fellow particles, some initial particles scatter into some fellow particles, okay? And now, we specify the, uh, the, the particles not only by their momentum, but also by their polarization. So suppose the P1 is the, the momentum of the, uh, the, the one of the, the first incoming particle, R1 would be its polarization, okay? And et cetera. And uh, for, for antiparticle, for antiparticle we put a bar, so you put the second particle is an antiparticle, then we put a two bar, okay? So, so, 
So, so that means this is an antiparticle, okay? And similarly, for the final state, we specify by momentum and the polarization. And if we do a bar, again, we mean the antiparticle, okay? So the scattering amplitude is where we want to calculate things like this, okay, with some initial momentum and the, uh, uh, um, yeah. So specify by the initial and the final momenta. And the polarizations. Okay. And then 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 bar is for antiparticle. Okay. So so between the scattering amplitude and the green function, the only thing difference is how you treat the external, uh, 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 external lines, okay? Uh, all the propagator, uh, uh, these are the same. So now remember, in the, in the scalar case, we just remove all the, uh, we just remove all the uh, external uh, lines, okay? But here, we have to be a little bit careful because here we have to, uh, uh, because now they have the polarization. And now we, sh uh, we should have things to specify the polarization of each particle. Okay. So, so now it's reasonable to expect, and the polarization of the, uh, each particle is specified by those u and v functions we derived earlier. Okay. So, We truncate all the propagators for the external lines, but we have to assign polarization vectors. Okay, so these two assign polarization vectors. For each initial and final particle, okay, particle or under particle, okay, and uh, so so let me just state the rule, state the rule, and then I will uh, uh, motivate the rule, okay. So for for the initial state, if you consider the initial state, then if you have a particle, so this particle, suppose this particle is type of polarization R1, and then we draw a line like this, with the arrow like that, okay? And then assign the polarization vector, assign u, r1. So suppose that this have momentum p1 and p1, okay? And for antiparticle, say for example, r2 bar, then we just reverse the direction of the arrow. And then, then the polarization vector, I use V bar, R2, and P2. Okay, I always draw the momentum to be the same as the charge arrow, okay? So this is for the initial state, and the final state is the following. So we just first write down the rule, then I will motivate it, okay? So, so the final state, if it's a particle, then the particle will come out, and this is the S1, 
and say, suppose this is K1, and then it's given by U bar S1 K1. So if it's an antiparticle, and then it's an arrow which going out, suppose this is S2 bar, then, then this is given by V2, V S2. Okay, so, so when you do the scattering amplitude, you forget about the external propagator, but you, but you attach to each external line a polarization vector. Okay, polarization vector just specify u and v according to this rule. And the, and the, uh, so, so now let's see why this is the rule, okay? So now let's see why this is a rule. So remember, uh, so let's use this as an example. So, uh, uh, so this is the initial state, then that means this is a cat, okay? So if you remember that psi have the structure, uh, uh, the A u plus B dagger V, then psi bar have the structure A dagger u bar plus B, say V bar, okay? So remember this structure. So, so for the initial state, so, so suppose, yeah, let's try to motivate this rule. So initial state, you have a P1, R1. So suppose you have a particle like this. So this is obtained by, so, so, so we'll, don't worry about the proportional factor. So this is given by P1, then R1, dagger, acting on zero, okay? And then this you can obtain, you see the psi is proportional. So in order to have a dagger, you have to have psi bar. Okay, you have to have psi bar. So this is given by, can, can be obtained from psi bar. By multiply psi bar, say, uh, by something like this, okay? So, exponential. Minus I. Yeah, so uh, so you can verify this, but heuristically you will understand psi bar x gamma zero u r one p one. Okay, acting on zero. So so because psi bar have a lot of other things, so you need to multiply this by this polarization vector so that it will extract the a a p one r one piece. Okay. And so, so this is a polarization uh, uh, vector you need to include here, okay? And the reason this is the arrow which is going out is because this is the psi bar. So remember, the uh, things always come out from the psi bar, okay? Things always come out from the psi bar. Uh, uh, from this rule, uh, come out is for psi bar, okay? So similarly, you can, ex uh, uh, you can understand the other, uh, uh, the other rules, okay? Any questions? Yes? Yeah, because you have a spin. Yeah, if a spin, uh, spin have polarization. Yeah, this to characterize the polarization of the spin. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add, is there a symmetry that, like, contrast the, the root of the particle or the root root? Um, sorry? So this is always the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, this is always, yeah. Yeah, because there's no polarization. Yeah, it, it, there's no polarization. Yeah, for scalar, it just all, all this just become one because there's no polarization. Other questions? Okay, so so these are just rules you can uh, understand. Uh, uh, I just say, uh, and then this antiparticle initial state will be uh, created by psi. And then you need to uh, to multiply by psi, uh, by v bar on this term to extract this b dagger term, okay? Uh, because of the because of the v v bar uh, they're uh, 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 they're contracted, and then you can extract this v plus, okay? And uh, yeah, so 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 that's where those rules come from. Yes. Uh, 
Um, yeah, in in the real experiment, it's often uh, you have to. Uh, uh, it's often uh, it's not easy to observe the uh, polarized. Yeah, uh, uh, you have to. Um, yeah, you have to have very special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in general, you observe unpolarized. Yeah. Other questions? Good. So, so again. So now the. Now, now I can specify uh, more precisely this uh, spinner indices rule, okay, for the, uh, for the scattering amplitude case. So, so now you see the initial states. So now you have this U bar and you have U, okay. So the rule for the spinner indices contraction are the following. So the spinner indices, Are contracted by starting at the one end, so at one end of a fermionic line, of a fermionic line. With external factor either u bar or v bar, okay. So you start from uh, 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 and then you go back. And then you uh, you go along the along the complete line following the arrow backwards, okay? Okay, so so now let me just uh, 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 so right now it's a little bit abstract. Now now let me just explain this rule using an example will be very clear. Now we'll explain this rule uh, 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 using an example. So now let's consider the following example. So a very important example. In the development of particle physics, is this called Yukawa theory, which uh, Yukawa proposed in the 19, I think, around the 1930 something, and which he got a Nobel Prize for it. So, so let's consider you have a, 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 a scalar field. So let's just say you have the a klein gordon uh, Lagrangian density for scalar field, and then you have a Dirac Lagrangian for psi. Okay, and then suppose they intact by a term like this, minus g, psi, psi bar, psi. Okay, so this clearly is Lorentz invariant. Okay, suppose uh, clearly this is Lorentz invariant. And so essentially this, uh, 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 so now you can just draw the, draw the propagate, uh, draw the propagator. So the propagator, say we can have, let's denote this to be the phi, okay? And then this have the standard minus i, say k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon. So if this has, uh, this has momentum k. So we can also have, we also have fermionic lines that we will join the union, union the real line. So, so, so this again have the form I k slash plus m minus m plus I epsilon. Okay, and then we have interaction vertices. Okay, so minus i g. Okay, so because here I have a psi and a psi bar, 
So one of the lines coming out, one of line coming in. Okay. So now let's just consider a scattering process. So let's consider. So so uh, when the when um, when you have considered this, and the psi corresponding to say the proton, and the and then the phi corresponding to pi on, and he used this theory to explain the nuclear force between the say the proton. Okay, uh, to, uh, to explain the nuclear uh, force between the proton. So now let's just consider the pro. Yeah, but you can also consider, say, psi is an electron, or phi is a Higgs field, etc. Okay. So 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 now let's just consider the process of this p. So let's denote the psi particle by p. Let's go to p. Okay. So so you have two initial states. Are particles and fellow state are also particles, okay? And now you have the uh, one obvious diagram you can draw because now the internal uh, so the so the incoming line should be should be because they are particles should should going in, and then the outgo fellow state the particle should come out, okay? So so one possible diagram is like this. Okay, so suppose this is the P1. Call it uh, uh, um, polarization S1. Suppose this is P2, S2, and then this is K1. Say let's call it P1 prime, S1 prime, and P2 prime, S2 prime. So this is one of the diagram which can do this, but we can also have this internal line connect with that line, and this line connect with that line, so you can also have structure like this. Okay, so we have P1, S1, and P2, S2, and P1 prime, S1 prime, P2 prime, S2 prime. Okay, so so these are the two possible diagrams at lowest order. Okay, so now let's write down the expression corresponding to these two diagrams. Okay, so so um, so first thing we can write down. So, um, so each thing should give you a number in the end. Okay, each thing should give you a number in the end. So that's why. So, but you remember in the uh, in the uh, all these are the vac all these are vectors. Okay, all all these are spinners. So in the end, all the spinner indices should be contracted with each other. Okay. And all the spinner indices should be uh, contracted with each other. So that's why when we do this rule, you always start with u bar and v bar because these are the uh, are the are the row vectors. Okay. In the end, you want to contract with column vectors. Okay. So that's why you always start with u bar and v bar. So so u bar and v bar. If you look at this rule here, so the u bar uh, either corresponding to the final particles, V bar corresponding to initial antiparticles, okay? In both cases, the arrow always going toward the point. Okay, if you start from here, you have to go backwards, okay? Uh, you have to go backwards. Okay, so, so now let's look at this example. So we have two fermionic lines here. We have two fermionic lines here. So one is this one, and one is this one. Okay, we have two fermionic lines. So for this experiment then we should start with the bar. So this is outgoing particle. So that corresponding to U bar here, S1 prime. And here corresponding to the U bar, S2 prime. Okay? 
and then this corresponding to, uh, this is the initial particle, then this corresponding to US1, and this corresponding to US2. Okay, and so we just go backwards. So, so now we can just write it down very easily. So we have minus IG squared corresponding to two, two vertices. And for the first fermionic line, we have, for the first diagram, we have US1 prime bar, P1 prime, and US1, P1, and so this combined into a, scale, uh, into a number, okay? And now we have the propagator. Propagator is just a number. <coughs> minus i, p1 prime, minus p2, square, plus m square, minus i epsilon. So in principle, they can have a different mass. OK, sorry, uh, they can have a different mass. For example, here is m tilde, OK? And then we multiply the other fermionic line. So, so this will be us. Q prime bar, P2 prime, and then US2, P2, okay? And now, for this diagram, we just follow the same rule, but now this one is contracted with that, and this one is contracted with that, so except we still have minus IG square. So now this US1 prime, P1 prime is contracted with US2, P2, okay, they are connected. Okay, now they, now they become connected line. And then the, uh, again, you have this uh, um, indices, and then now you uh, work out the momentum, become P2 prime minus P1 square plus M square minus epsilon. And then you have US2 prime, P2 prime, now you have US1, P1, okay? Except one final thing, there's a relative minus sign between them. Okay, the, uh, the reason the, uh, there's a relative minus sign between them because between these two diagrams, it's equivalent, I, I exchange the order of the two external lag. So remember, if you want to exchange the order of the fermions, you have to have a minus sign, okay? And then you have to have a minus sign between the two, okay? Yes? Oh, uh, 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 yeah, of course, but, uh, 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 but we never write them down, yeah, explicitly. So you just assume, the, always assume momentum conservation. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so for this diagram, uh, the momentum, if I draw momentum here, will be P prime prime minus P P1. So this momentum will be, P2 prime minus P1. Okay. Yes? So the probability is the first line is P1 prime minus P1. Minus P1, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Good? So, 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 so just like that, okay? Uh, uh, just follow this rule. You, you just start with the line, always start with u bar and v bar, and you just follow the arrow backwards and keep, keep track all the all the uh, gamma matrices and the spinner indices, et cetera, and then eventually uh, you will just get the number, okay? You, uh, you will multiply with a, a column vector and, the, and then you are done. So here we are considering, uh, 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 here, uh, the vertex is very simple, just a number, okay, just a number. And later we will consider more complicated vertex. And actually the vertex can contain matrices. And so that will be a little bit more complicated. Also, this is a simple, uh, 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 here is a simple example. We don't have fermionic propagator. Okay, we only have a bosonic propagator here. Okay. Yes? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, be, because of the overall sign on the matter, because in the end we will square it. Yeah, so, so when you calculate the cross section, you have to take the, yeah, it be, be, in order to calculate the probability, you have to take the amplitude square. Yeah, so, so overall sign, we don't normally bother to track. Yeah, you only need to worry about the uh, relative sign. Other questions? 
Yes. Yeah, the sign. So the relative sign between them, uh, 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 that, that's the only place. Uh, for this example, that's the only place. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the minor sign. And of course, the spin of nature uh, 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 is reflected that you, uh, you always have to keep track of the spin of indices. Yeah. Yeah, so so indeed. So so if you yeah, uh, and then you just miss this minus sign, essentially. Is the minus sign? Yeah, but you have to know that you have to exchange them, you get the minus sign. Yeah, you have to have that. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't have that, and uh, yeah. I, I I think when you come up proposed it, he actually didn't know all this detail. Uh, he just estimated, yeah. And then he predicted the yeah, he wants to explain the nuclear force between the proton. And then, and then he say, oh, maybe they, uh, the two protons we exchange, yeah, or, or between proton and neutron, or maybe they exchange a scalar particle. And he just postulated the exchange a scalar particle. And then from the strength of the nuclear interaction, he estimated the mass of the particle, uh, the scalar particle. And then they found it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they found such a scalar particle, which was the pion. And yeah, that's how they first discovered the pile. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Let's stop here today.